Blaft had had the most wonderful night in a very long time. Action Vid Hero, whose name she had found out was Grindel, had been most attentive to her, almost like a young couple. They both knew it was just for a fun time and nothing serious would come from it, though she hoped their little fling would blossom into something more. Looking at her image in the slightly foggy mirror at a small home on the ring, she inspected herself before getting ready for her shift. Twisting and looking at her bizarre, she smiled and posed seductively. She knew she still had it, even though she was an older woman, whom many would say was past her prime. Still, that did not matter to... She must have missed the call from the intercom, however. She did not know who could be trying to talk to her. She did not have many friends and those who were polite enough to send a message or call ahead of time. Wrapping a towel around her wet form, she left the refresher and went to the door. Opening it slightly with a security feature, she asked, Hello? How can I help you? In front of her was a mid-pops in planetary enforcement uniform. Flushing a bear, she said to her, I am Agent Gorla Khan. I have questions for you. Let me get dressed, okay? Gox was ecstatic and frustrated at the same time. Well, he still had to pay and give crony balls to Gjork. His debt had been reduced significantly. However, that blasted human said she needed pass to work on someone. Pass whose cost has been added to his debt. Still, he was ahead in paying down the debt, if only just, by about a hundred credits or so. Still, he had to forge his production documents with Aquani, saying that a common fungus had gotten to them, and that others were of too poor quality to sell. He hoped it would last long enough. Looking at his various expenses, maintenance request reports, and projected earnings, he knew something would give. The money he had been using to pay Gjork would have normally been spent on maintenance, which would have kept his farm afloat and possibly profitable, at least not in the red. Gops needed to do something, or he'd lose his family's farm and quite possibly his life, and daughters as well. In a fit of frustration, he flipped the desk, sending it crashing to the floor. As papers fell about him, he fell against his back wall, breathing deeply. A lone slip of paper landed next to him, with numbers written on it in his own hand. 162-925 What am I going to do? Selina was still unable to do anything, as she was still waiting for materials to arrive. Finally giving in, she threw clothes into a box and walked down to a local laundromat that was a little ways down the street. Wearing a sort of see-through black tank top and some shorts, with her hair poofy and a tail uncombed, as she carried a box of dirty clothes, she looked the part of a typical hood rat from one of Earth's many megacities, Los Angeles, Buenos Aires, or Cairo mostly, with their legions of poor citizens. The walk was not that bad, and there were others in the laundromat, though it was not crowded. Naimin and Bipops, mostly, though there was a lone lizard man, she could not remember their species' name, who had big, bulky headphones in his head, his eyes closed as he bobbed and twitched his pierced tail along to his music. As she looked at what kind of soap to get and their prices, she was dumbfounded. This is straight up robbery, ugh! In a small fit of annoyance, she hid the overpriced vending machine at an angle. With a loud metallic ring that echoed through the laundromat, she saw that she dented the casing significantly, an indent of her first three knuckles quite clear. Blushing a bit in embarrassment, she tried to slink away quietly. She failed. The lizard man was closest to her. Taking off his headphones, he said to her, I haven't seen a human here before. Are all of you so violent like they say? No, I just lost my call, that's all, Selina replied. The cost of detention of that machine up... I mean, ten credits for a single detergent unit? That's absurd. It's a total rip-off. No one buys soap from here unless they have to. I can let you use some of mine. I go by Rotak. What's your moniker? Selina, she replied, tossing her clothes into an empty washer next to his. Accepting the offer of detergent, she continued on. I've only recently moved here from Earth. Been here, I think, eleven rotations? Been a bit busy, though. I saw the movers. Good company, them, he replied back. They're expensive, but those two tuxes know their stuff. Very few of them can survive in this gravity. I think they're ex-military, but there's no proof of that. Uh-huh, Selina said. What about you? I've been here a few solar rotations, he said. I like the kind of weather here. Lots of sun, except for the rainy season. Arrived on the freighter, now I do factory work in the ring. What about you? You've got to be doing something good to afford your, uh, augments. Even if you live in this crappy neighborhood. Oh, I'm a wearwear prosthesist, she said. I can't do wearwear work for the moment, so I'm limited to repair and replacement. No way, Rutak exclaimed. Then why are you here in the laundromat? It's because I don't charge ridiculous prices and I've only had two clients. With a murmur of assent, the two lapsed into silence. Well, my clothes are done, see you around, he said to her after a while. 
The lizard man tossed his clean clothes into a bag and left. Through the window, Selina saw that Rutak got onto a hoverbike, then revved the motor twice and sped off. Selina browsed her phone while she waited for her clothes to finish up their wash cycle, so that she could start the drying cycle. Nothing much of interest had happened, and so she found herself walking back home. Finding that her deliveries had arrived, she opened the door, then stacked up the boxes with her clothes on top. Taking everything to her workshop, she set her printer to work, having already designed just a Kwa's leg. With nothing else to do but simply wait, she caught up a taxi to take her to an eatery she found on the datanet that served cooked meat. Arriving, and making sure she had everything, she walked to the main window of the establishment. It was a small place with only outside seating. Placing an order, she went to sit down to wait when a shadow loomed over her. Small galaxy, Rutak said to Selina as she looked up. The lizard man, a dinosheen, Selina finally recalled, stood at a height of over six and a half feet, scales covering his whole body, digit to grade legs ending in free, thick toes, and the long tail. Yeah, it is, Selina said, then asked, what brings you here? Probably the same as you, getting a meal. Well, sit down. We can eat and chat together. Sure. I like that. The two of them began to have a long and lengthy conversation.